Hey, nerdlings. What's up, nerdlings? It's TLC. Branson Edition! This is Tom and Lacey, collecting all the things, searching from here to there, finding comic book tables, house Legos, and action figs, retro gaming, amiibos, and image prints. Watch as they collect them all. Tom and Lacey collecting right now. If you've never heard of Branson, that's all right. If you're a fan of The Simpsons, you know that basically Branson is Las Vegas, as if run by Ned Flanders. What is this place? Branson, Missouri. My dad says it's like Vegas, if it were run by Ned Flanders. And not to be confused with Bronson, Missouri. No, Pelly. This is Bronson, Missouri. Mm. Hey. hey, Ma, how about some cookies? No dice. This ain't over. On our way to Branson, pretty much in the middle of nowhere. It's my boat. There's a flea market that we've been into a couple of times. There's an arcade. That man's playing Galaga. I actually found a couple of things. Atari games. So I got River Raid and uh, Lost Luggage. Now, Lost Luggage was actually a better label because the one that we had was not very pretty. Surprisingly, I didn't have River Raid at all. And then I got this weird one called Wabbit. So Wabbit? The end label... Are you hunting them? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the end label was loose, but it was there, so I did get that. But yeah, there's like a very angry girl, and I think she's chucking eggs at the Wabbits, going for the Kellys. Very much like Peter Cottontail. <laughs> <laughs> But they, anyway, rascally they were rascally, <laughs> I guess. I had one thing that caught my eye. Just the one. Just one this time. It's not a TARDIS. But it's kind of close. <laughs> and I liked it because I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. It's, you know, it's an old phone booth. But then the thing that I was like, look, the door opens. How cool is that? And I was like, I can put some of my action figures in there. But then what made it even better is there's actually a phone in there. And the phone comes off the hook. <laughs> that was like, okay, I'm buying this. Because I was like, dude, my action figures can hold the phone. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. This is off the this hook. This is off the hook. Uh, what's up with the pretty and punk? I don't know. <laughs> British people like to tag things, I guess. I don't know. That's my guess. Watch this, guys. Doctor Who old school special effects. Whoa! He went back in time or forward in time or something. It's, uh, uh timey wimey. I mean, why me? I have no idea where he picks that stuff up. Once we were in Branson proper, we wanted to check out a comic shop that you had heard of before. I have heard about it a couple of times on Facebook from some other comic people called The Comic Force. Now, I would like to say that we were kind of disappointed that this was all the way in Branson because since we lost our beloved yeah. comic cave, we haven't really had a good comic shop in our area that really had that comic vibe to it. But this place had it in this spades. This was awesome. The first thing that you notice when you walk in is the floor. The floor was covered in comic book pages and that was just really neat. And then they had comic book t-shirts hanging up all over the place, comic art drawn by local people. That was something that I really enjoyed seeing because not only did they have the prints on display, but yeah. you could purchase some of them and they had the information right yeah. there. So maybe if you saw something you liked, you could commission a piece. The other thing I liked about this place is it had a very good um, backlog section for you to go through. It also had, you know, Marvel and DC comics, but then they had a very good selection of independent comics. And that's pretty much the bread and butter of comics lately, I feel like, is independent comic people. Such as this one, my Grimm's Fairy Tales I love to collect, but this would be the uh, 2019 Swimsuit Edition. Oh, come on, guys. If any of you were comic fans back in the 90s, you know how much fun it was finding those old school swimsuit editions, like the Marvel, the Image ones, and Lady Death. Oh, yeah. So there you go. Sun's out, bun's out, and, uh, whoa, Dorothy's not in Kansas anymore because she's at the beach. <laughs>
Of course, it wasn't all about the comics because they did have a nice selection of tabletop games. Uh, mm -hmm. They had some toys, some Funko figures, all the stuff that you would want to see in a comic and tabletop gaming store like this. But of course, the thing that won you over was the comics. It was, because not only did they have the new comics, so I was able to pick up Ghost Spider number three, which I was missing. Uh, I was able to fill in quite a good number of my spider Gwen. Nice. And if you remember from past videos, when I go hunting, I seem to always find the same comics of spider Gwen and never the ones I don't have. And this time I found four that I didn't have. So that was pretty awesome. And now I literally am only missing one oh. spider Gwen comic, number 24 right next door like literally to comic <laughs> force was 1984 branson branson edition <laughs> now here in our hometown we have the original 1984 arcade and we love that place it is two stories multiple rooms they have a good selection of pinball tables and they have an incredible selection of arcade machines. We love it, in fact, so much that we had our wedding reception there. Yeah, we did. <laughs> we had heard that they had opened up a Branson location and we were very excited to check that out. So this was perfect and a great way to take a little break from hunting and, exactly. and scouring yeah. for some good collectibles. When we first entered the place, I think the thing that caught our eye was they had a great merch wall, but then also just the fun little things, whether it was the fun flooring and the little mm -hmm. patterns and designs that you saw there, or the Space Invaders. Made, made out, out of Atari of, cartridges. That I was loved great. that. Kind of made me want to do something like that at home. <laughs> now, the premise of 1984 is that as an arcade, you pay a cover charge and then you get free play on all of the arcade machines. You do have to pay for pinball, but hit up Captain Retro if you want to yeah. know how expensive that could be to maintain those things. <laughs> they had a pretty good selection of pinball tables and arcade machines. They definitely did not have as many as what we have here in Springfield. Yeah, but and, it's still a fairly new store, right, so it might be a while before they can build up their collection. It's a new, they might be kind of, you know, uh, testing the waters mm -hmm. to see how well it goes before they start you know, cramming it full of arcade machines. But it was definitely a great time to, you know, just pass a little bit of time, get some game time in. They had two TV spots they set did. up. Yeah, which I always think that's great because, you know, if you get drugged there and you don't necessarily want to play games with whoever you're with, or if you get bored playing games, waiting on people, they had a bunch of, it was a bunch of VCRs and old tapes set up there so you can sit down, couches, watch TV like you're in your old living room. I love stuff like that. They did have an area set up for parties, mm -hmm. so I mean, this would be a great place for a party, definitely. Yeah. They'd had one thing, though, that made me feel even smaller than I already am. <laughs> Honey, I shrunk Lady Lacey! <laughs> Look at the size of that boombox! And once more, even though they didn't have a whole lot of arcade machines, we definitely got, uh, got some good game time in. Mm -hmm. Let's see, we took down Golden we Axe. We it. We did it. Took down altered we beast. beat it. Power on. <laughs> and at that point, I think we were getting hungry for lunch. So. I was hungry, and let's face it, after altered beast, I was really tired of pressing the button. So I was like, I, I can't do any more games. <laughs> Now, if you are ever in Branson, Missouri, and you're hungry, 
you got to go somewhere kitschy. So maybe just look for the 43 foot tall chicken. Show him how big it is. Look how tiny he is. <laughs> this is cracking me up way more than it should. After our meal, we were fully recharged and ready to take on another flea market. No. There is one right there in Branson that we like to go to because for me, there's a particular booth that usually has a nice offering of Famicom and Super Famicom games. What'd you find? Super Nintendo games. Now this was the first time that I saw a bunch of boxed games there, which was really cool. And I got excited at first, although a lot of them were the pachinko and parlor games. So I kind of held off on those, even though they were in the box, uh, because there were a couple of cartridges that I wanted to go ahead and pick up. He's like, that volcano's erupting. I'm grabbing my stuff. I got my orange, and I'm getting the hell out of here. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of the prices on hand, but since we don't see these in our area that often, I went ahead and I sprung on Dragon Quest 2 because for the Famicom collection, this was the only one that we were missing. And then I went ahead and got Square's Tom Sawyer. Is that because your name's Tom? No, not even close. <laughs> Way back in the day, a buddy of mine and I, we decided we wanted to go after all of these Square, Squaresoft games before uh, they started buying up all these other companies and putting out like a bazillion games a year. I remember specifically that <laughs> there was a Tom Sawyer game by Square, and I just thought that was weird. So it just stuck with me. Once I saw this, I was like, okay, it's time to add that to the collection. And she had to have one herself. I did. I saw the top of it sticking out of the box and I said, ooh, it's a purple cartridge. We don't have a purple one yet. So I picked it up and I told him, I said, I don't even care what the game is. We're getting this game. And then we looked at it and saw that it was Othello. And I said, do we have it? And he goes, nope. So I said, woohoo! Not on Famicom, at least. <laughs> I didn't care what the game was. I just wanted the purple one. In that same booth, he had some Pokemon things, and since I've just started getting into Pokemon, I decided to pick me up some stickers and some keychains. So I just got me some fun stickers. I don't know what I'm going to do with them, if I want to put them on something or turn them into magnets. They were only a buck a piece, and they are a little poofy, a little bit. They look a little poofy. But uh, I wanted to get the different varieties of the different Pokemon, so that's what I got there. And then I had to go pick me up some Pokemon keychain. So I got Psyduck, and I got Bulbasaur, and I got Squirtle, and Charmander, and then I don't know exactly, like, <laughs> is it Vaporeon or Vaporeon? Something like that. You know better than it's I do. It's <laughs> Eevee's evolution into the, the water thing, but I think it's Vapor Vaporeon. Somebody will correct me in the, in the comments below, I'm sure. And then I am Team Instinct, so I had to get my logo. <laughs> Very nice. So that's what I got. You know, that's kind of a, an oddball thing to find in a flea market. It is. But a fun find as well. Right. It's a video game booth, so I think, you know, it kind of goes together-ish. And these are all, like, rubbery, raised textured, so I thought that'd be kind of fun. You know, if nothing else, it'll be great on the Christmas tree. Seems like to me you need to keep your hands off, Elvis. While she was going through the Pokemon stuff, I was still scouring through the games. And past all of the cartridge stuff, I started to look through the disc-based things. Because there were some Japanese games on hand. And one of the reasons I always tell you to pay attention to those spines when you're looking through CDs is you never notice if you're going to see one that says Hue Card. As in, 
angry baseball player throwing something at you. So this is one of those things. I suppose it is up to you guys to determine how complete in box this is. Obviously, it doesn't have that larger cardboard sleeve that a lot of the TurboGrafx games had, but it does have the original case, the booklet, and even the slip sleeve for the Hue card itself. And hanging on the pegboard, kind of in the same area as a mm -hmm. lot of your keychains. Which I think you actually even got on to me for because I didn't tell you they were yeah. hanging right yeah, there. Yeah, you didn't notice this. I was busy she looking at Pokemon. She doesn't have my back, guys. Help me out. <laughs> but mixed within all of the handheld games, a bunch of Game Boy, Game Boy Color games, was a single Hue card by itself. Mm -hmm. And it looks like it is a guy who, uh, he's... He's, He's got a little a fan. Japanese fan He's and a hot. mallet. He's like, oh my gosh, guys, it's so hot out here. And obviously he beat up everyone else in this picture and he's the and winner. They're playing croquet. Well, next we hit up another booth that had some toys in it, and I, I spy my little Spider Gwen. So I had to get it. So I don't even really know what these things are, but it's Spider Gwen, so I didn't really care. It doesn't matter. Nope. And there's a mystery Spider thing Gwen. in here, so I don't know what that is. Shall we see what the mystery thing is? So there she is in her like <laughs> bug pill form. I don't know if that's like <laughs> spider larva. I don't know. She looks so weird like that. And then we got a tiny, tiny little Ultron. <laughs> that's the it's, smallest it's Ultron ever. He's just gonna ever. sit right here, cause I'm gonna kill you. Yeah. That's what. That's what he sounds like. All right, everybody. Let's see what the mystery is. Oh, it's a little Spider Man. Although, kind of looks like Spider Pig. Spider Pig. Spider Pig. Does whatever a spider pig does. <laughs> it does kind of look a spider pig. Look, he's got his spider on his back and his tummy. It's kind of funny. Because she just has that tum tum thing or whatever it's called. Tum tum, sum sum, sum sum, sum sum. So so. Oh. Yeah, that's kind of cute. I'm not sure why Ultron's with him though. Something I could not pass up when I saw was the Super Game Boy Nintendo Player's Guide. Look at all those games on the front. First of all, the price tag, only five bucks for this. And this thing, I mean, not even the corners or anything are messed up. To be fair, I could not remember if we already had this or not. Yeah, I don't remember But at either. five dollars, I was gonna get it because if we have it, I can find this a brand oh, yeah. new home. I'm sure we know a lot of people who'd like to have it. This was one of those player's guides that it tells you a little bit about the games and kind of gives you some tips and tricks, but it's mostly showing off the fact that you could play them on the Super Game Boy. You could get certain borders with some of the games, like There's very specified ones. Look at the colors in there. Oh yeah, I love this. The one for Donkey Kong, the border looks like the Donkey Kong arcade machine. Uh -huh, that's awesome. I love that. Another book that I found that I had to pick up. So this is uh, got some girth to it. This was only three dollars, and this has a is that like a hipster hobo fox? I guess. I think so. But maybe. the ultimate unauthorized Nintendo game strategies, and this is just one of those books. It is nothing but text in here. There's some pictures. Okay, a couple of pictures. Black and white pictures. <laughs> but it is telling you how to uh, win at Nintendo games. Little known fact, this is exactly what makes Mega Dan so good. It's nothing to do with skill. <laughs> I thought Captain Algebra gave a secret away that it was the Game Genie. Game over? No way! Because we got Game Genie! Alright, now the last thing I picked up was... Monopoly Gamer, and it's the uh, Mario Kart edition. And this one's really cute. You've got, instead of money, you've got coins, your tokens are racers, and then this was the game that you could buy like extra bits and pieces to. Look at this. IRL DLC. I know, isn't that great? They come with a little racer and then their card that tells them kind of their power up. I got this for 12 bucks, and it normally retails for like 40, I think 40 bucks at Walmart. And we did open it up. We counted mm -hmm. everything. All of the pieces are there. Everything looks to be in really good shape. And honestly, just the, the little cart figures alone make it so much fun to I have. know, because it's not like your typical, you know, Monopoly pieces where it's just like the thimble or whatever. It's actually, you know, it's Mario Kart. So you actually get them in little Mario Karts. I want 
So, I did pick up one more thing. <laughs> it's something he's been looking for for a really long time. I love my tropical shirts. He does. And I got a little tropical shirt that I'm hoping is going to fit Paul. <laughs> Paul! Hey, buddy. What do you think? Stuff. There you go. There's our loot. Uh, so yeah, flea market finds and real comic shops. Random finds. Yeah, we were uh, kind of all <laughs> over the place with this one. All right. Well, I've got some games to check out, some tips to read up and on. We got some Monopoly to play. And I've got a cat to hunt down and dress <laughs> up. I like cat even with this place. Nerdlings, let us know in the comments down below what you think of all of this stuff. Maybe uh, tell us about your own pickups, even if it's cat clothes. We'd like to hear. And give the video a like if you happen to like it. Be sure to subscribe. Hit that notification bell. <laughs> Good grief. Who knows what we're going to pick up next. Like a phone booth. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram so that you know what's coming your way next. Go over to Tee Public because we've got merchandise over there, nerdlings. And if we like it. We nerd it. Come here, Paul. Oh, the poor cat. He has no idea what's coming. Shut up, Grant, we're filming. Shh. We're filming. Quiet on the set. Let's see, guys. Be quiet. Sneak peek. Hey, nerdlings. What up, nerdlings? <laughs> I'm putting my phone away. What you want? Psst. <laughs> 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 Wanna try that again? Yes. I forgot that I was doing that. <laughs> hey, nerd <We're> not ready. <laughs> Just got our channel. You might not know Shut up. <laughs> That's over. They look at Tom. Don't worry. Future Tom's got clips there. Other than the label label upgrade. <clears throat> <laughs> Cut that out, Tom. Shut up. I thought it said pretty and punk on the front and then punk on the back. Shut up, Tom Murphy. Family computer! Uh, and then we have a little tiny Voltron. Try that again. Ultron. Ultron. You're right. <laughs> <laughs>